hi there so today i want to talk about finding peace of the heart finding peace of the soul so with terminal diagnosis people tend to start focusing inward people start thinking about their spirit they start thinking about the death and even if they may not be talking to you about it it doesn't mean they are not thinking about it as a matter of fact when somebody has a terminal diagnosis they actually know way more than anybody else what is going on with themselves so just the fact that they are not talking to you about it doesn't mean they are not thinking about it another thing with terminal diagnosis is it's terminal now nobody knows when a person will die other than god and nobody can determine that other than the one who gives life however death is part of our life the bible says death is our worst enemy it's our greatest enemy but no one can escape it we have it to deal with the good news is that for those who believe in jesus there is no death the bible says they sleep in him so it's transformation from life to a better life because we all know what the bible says about the other side with jesus and i'm not gonna address that today but i am a person of faith so when people are approaching death whether it's a year whether it's three years whether it's a week whether it's days i say this because as a chaplain i have encountered people in all ranges from expecting death in a week to expecting death in six months and then some people stay for some people stay for years while they are dealing with terminal diagnosis so um what happens is that people tend to focus inward when this time comes in people's lives people tend to focus inward they are aware of what they are feeling they are aware of their thoughts their spirit and even if they are not talking to you about it they are thinking about it oftentimes people will call their clergy to talk with them or a chaplain um, I talk with many people or I have talked with many people um, when they are dealing with terminal diagnosis and people want to find peace in their hearts so here is some of the things that are going on in people's lives number one they are wondering what is going to happen to me when i die and that's a big one whether they are talking to you about it or not so as family members these are things you talk to clergy to strangers and they may not even talk to you as a family and it all depends on how you are receiving their situation um, whether it's mothers and fathers siblings people hide um, their pain from their loved ones to protect them I have seen this all the time where a parent will not tell the children how they are feeling because they are trying to protect them and it's this false protection on both sides the kids don't want to talk about it because they are trying to protect the parent or the, the sibling who is dealing with these situations and there's nothing as beautiful as bringing the walls down and seeing each other face to face and dealing with these situations together it doesn't always happen and believe me it is difficult it is very very difficult anyhow people are seeking to find peace 
in their heart. What is going to happen to me when I die? That's one of the questions that I have got asked by thousands of people. What is going to happen to me? And as people get closer to death, the reality of it actually makes them even more afraid. Even people who have very strong faith. I have worked and talked with believers who love Jesus and are born again. They are confident in the work of Jesus, but they are worried whether they did enough, whether whether they will actually go to heaven. Believe it or not, believers who love Jesus and they worry about if they will actually go to heaven. I have worked with many believers who towards the end are doubting themselves and they are wondering if this is going to be a reality for them. So that's, that's number one that you need to keep in mind. They are wondering what's going to happen when they die. Number two, they are also wondering about their loved ones. What's going to happen to my loved ones after I die? Is my husband, is my wife, are my children going to be okay? If it's, you know, some young adults that die of cancer or stuff like that, they are wondering, are my parents going to be okay in their old age? So family members care about each other and they do worry about what's going to happen to their loved ones. These are the two, actually it's, it's all the, what matter the most. All the other things are so insignificant and immaterial. People worry about their mortality because even with death, yet we shall live. The question is where? And then the worry of their loved ones. Now I have been in a near death experience when I had my daughter. And I can tell you, when this beautiful girl was born, I had extreme preeclampsia, and I was in the dying process, and I praise God for another opportunity. Since then, my life has never been the same. All of a sudden, I realized what's the most important thing in life, and that's God and people. When I say people, I mean any person that God brings into my life is significant to God and they are significant to me. So as I lay there begging for a second chance because I had young children in very um, vulnerable situations it's all I was thinking about is my relationship with God, the things he has placed in my heart, my children. I was thinking about people. I was not thinking about things, um, things that don't matter, things that people have said. I wasn't thinking about those things. I lay there holding my children in my heart and begging God and it changed it totally changed how I approach life how I live my life it totally changed me so for people with ter terminal diagnosis um, the doctors God has equipped human beings with knowledge with wisdom and they standard things they may not be 100% correct, but they are pretty 99% correct. And I'm saying this because I have worked with terminal diagnosis in people's lives for over 17 years. And doctors aren't mean. It's not like they don't care. But they are talking about something they have experienced and they are telling you these things so that you can take care of things that you need to take care of and have the most peaceful death that you can have. And again, 
I have worked in this realm for very many years. Like I say, over 17 years, 18th year. And there are beautiful deaths. I have been involved in seeing some amazing deaths. I have seen thousands of people dying very peaceful deaths. I have seen many people take their last breath while I am sitting there, while I am holding their hand, while I am surrounding their family, while they say their goodbyes, and I've seen people actually take their last breath and some of these deaths are extremely beautiful. It is the way you would wish every person to die. And since we will all die, believe me, you can't run away from it. I can't. None of us can run away from it. Since it's going to happen, why not make it the most beautiful experience that we can make it? And that has been my goal for many years. And since we can't run away from it, how can we make it the most beautiful experience? And as a spiritual care person, my goal has always to help people find peace as they are dying. I have dealt with very, very many situations. I have dealt with fathers who sexually abused their daughters. I have dealt with mothers who neglected their children when they were little. And now in the dying process, they are dealing with guilt and shame. And they are wondering if they'll ever be forgiven. I have dealt with husbands who have cheated on their wives. I have dealt with wives who are carrying extreme bitterness and resentment. I've dealt with all kinds of things. Why? Because people are human beings and these things that happen are real life things that happen to real human beings. And my goal has always been to help people find peace as they are taking their last breath. The other thing is to help people find their peace as they are letting go of their loved ones to go and be with Jesus. So it's working with people to find amendment in situations that need amendment. Sometimes I've seen people who in their dying process, they are looking for somebody who they wonder if they wronged, they wonder if they wronged that person. And they are looking for that person to make sure they are making amends because they want to make sure that thing that happened long time ago is not going to hinder them from going to heaven. And we need to be aware of this as families. When you are dealing with your loved ones as they are going through these transitions, you need to be aware that there are certain things they are doing to find peace within their own soul. And it should be your job to make these things happen for them. It should be your goal to make, if it's so and so, let's say where there's even estrangement. I've dealt with parents who have been estranged from their children for years. And as they are facing their terminal diagnosis, they want to see that child and say, I'm sorry, or try to find amends so that they are dying peacefully. I have helped families come together and deal with these situations so that they can die a peaceful death. So as people are facing their terminal diagnosis, it's important to let them lend their care. Listen to them. Pay attention to the things that they are doing, the things that they are saying. And we may not understand everything that they are trying to do, but honor what they are doing because the things they are saying and the things they are doing is a guide to what they need to do for the sake of their own soul. So when you are dealing with your loved ones, pay attention to what they are saying. Help them to find peace in their hearts. Let us not make it about ourselves. 
let us make every inch of their care about them as they are facing their terminal diagnosis. So I have been blessed, praise God, to pray with people to receive Jesus. Where, for example, even fathers, and I'm, I'm not saying one or two, <laughs> but fathers who have sexually abused their daughters. And their daughters want this father to die and go to hell. And they've got mad at me for praying with this man or that, the other man to get saved and assure them that they will go to heaven. This is just an example of the many things that I have worked with. And to help some of these daughters find peace because when you carry something somebody did to you and they are dead, they are dead, but they are still controlling your life. It's as sad as it is, but they are still controlling your life because you are still living with the pain, the bitterness of it. And we can all find healing for the things that have happened in our lives that are painful. And I'm not saying that these things are not painful. We have all been hurt. We have all endured things that are extremely painful. But we can find healing. We can find consolation. So my goal has always been to help people find consolation, find peace, um, release things that nobody is going to tell you sorry. Some people will hurt you and they'll never say sorry to you because they are arrogant um, or in their mind they didn't do anything to you. You deserve it because they look down on you whatever the reason the fact is you can't make other people see what you see if somebody doesn't say sorry to you are you going to be their slave for the rest of their life and i mean mental slave emotional slave or are you going to release yourself to release them and be who god has called you to be so those whose parents or whoever it is died and they never apologized to you, you can still find healing. I have had to find healing in my life for situations that have happened in my life where no sorry came to me. And I don't expect sorry. I have learned never to expect sorry in life. Because if you expect sorry, you could be a slave mentally and emotionally for the rest of your life. I have learned to never expect sorry. And I have had tough situations myself. So I'm sharing this to say, don't die bitter. Do not die bitter. And don't let your loved one die bitter. All with fear and regret. Do everything you can to help your loved one die a peaceful death and do everything you can to find peace for yourself. May God bless you.